Hotspot Shield service makes your internet browsing safer, more secure, and fully private. Click now to learn more. Welcome to my unboxing and review of the Corsair Obsidian 250D, a no compromises mini ITX case. So it's Obsidian series, you know it's gonna be well packaged, gotta like that nice soft closed cell foam. It's gonna have a, a, a clean overall aesthetic. So you're not gonna have any sort of like, you know, Vengeance C70 army green colors or anything like that. And it is going to be expected to hold the highest tier of hardware. But unlike other Obsidian cases, this one is a mini ITX enclosure. So it'll hold the highest end stuff that you could possibly expect to run in a mini ITX case. So we'll start with an overall tour of the outside. At the front, we find a full size five and a quarter inch bay, as well as a reset switch, nice little recessed one there, and a power switch, two USB 3.0 ports, microphone headphone port, and the front, there you go, which has a nice brushed aluminum finish, is removable, giving you access to that nice, also removable fan filter here in the front. So you just go ahead and pop those tabs down there. And then it comes with a 140 millimeter fan, but I believe you can actually install up to a 160 or 200 millimeter, anyway, you can install a larger fan should you see fit. On the sides you find mesh as well as removable fan filters on both sides so one of them has fan mounts right next to it and the other does not. So there you go, magnetized fan filters so you can pop those off, clean them and then throw them right back into place quite easily. All right, which brings us to the top where we have a window that allows us to look down on the graphics card, CPU area, and that is pretty much about it. Then the other side where there are two 120 millimeter fan mounts. These can be used for air cooling or you can actually mount a dual 120 millimeter radiator in the case. So you couple that with the fact that you could also jam another radiator into the front. You can actually put a pretty decent, fully custom liquid cooling setup in here with dual 120 and uh, at least a 140 millimeter radiator without running out of clearance. So let's pop off the top there, that gives us access to the inside. So there's that five and a quarter inch bay. There's the clearance for the included 120 millimeter fan as well as a radiator. Even with Asus's little mini ITX boards that have the riser PCB portion for the power delivery, you're still gonna have enough clearance, but it's really, really, really tight. And then that pretty much does it for the top half. Oh yeah, GPU length, so you can install pretty much whatever GPU you could possibly want with the exceptions of some really long ones like the 7990. That one does not fit. At the back we've got little rubber grommets for a couple more 60 millimeter fans. You probably won't need those though, as well as a full size power supply mount. And this is the first area where Corsair gets a couple of marks off from me. This is not the most solid power supply mount that I've ever seen. You pull out two thumb screws, yes, two thumb screws, and then this plate comes off. So it's actually only held in by two screws on the top. Once you have a power supply in there, it feels not bad, but it just seems like it wouldn't have been that much more work to put a couple more thumb screws on there. Also on the bottom by the power supply, we have a removable fan filter. So you can have your fan on the power supply on the bottom. And then finally, rounding out the back of the case, we have four thumb screws that give us access to the internal two by two and a half millimeter and two by three and a half millimeter drive cages. So you can mount up to two hard drives and two SSDs or four SSDs in this case on the removable sleds. Uh, the way that you wire them up, there is no back plane unfortunately. That would be a really, really cool but also very premium and expensive addition to this case is simply by opening up this side, wiring them up from here, and then connecting them to the power supply itself. Speaking of the power supply itself, you can put pretty much any power supply you'd want, and then the wire management is done in the front of the case. So that's why they included that classic fan grill for that front 140 millimeter fan. Let's go ahead and have a look at an actual finished case. So I did spend some time building up a fairly high-end gaming machine in here. So I've used an H100i. I've got two hard drives and one SSD, although I could have easily put in another one. I'm using an Asus uh, Maximus 6 Impact. So that's pretty much the highest end MITX case or um, motherboard on the market. I've also got a full-size Blu-ray drive up here, so that's not a short length one or anything like that. And I went and threw a GTX Titan as well as an AX1200i uh, power supply. So you can see there's lots of room for the modular interface down here, even with this long power supply. And then the cable management is tucked up here in the front. GTX Titan, uh, we've got probably about another half an inch or even an inch of space here, but that's pretty much as big as you can get in terms of a graphics card. And then there's lots of room over here near the uh, CPU socket area for 
Just general cable management and cooling, and everything's actually quite clean once you've got the whole thing installed. So there were only a couple things I noticed while I was building in it. One of them is that you, uh, you actually remove the front bezel in order to change out the front fan. I think I changed the front fan for an LED fan or something like that when I was doing the build. And watch this, guys. You can go ahead and, uh, so if you pop off the front bezel, the legs actually come off. So what happens is uh, the whole case falls down and I actually almost chipped my table when I did that. So that's one thing to watch out for. It's not a design flaw, it's just a design decision they made and you're going to want to watch for it when you're actually building in it. The other thing is uh, optical and the H100i is super, super tight because of the way that the, uh, the tubing is positioned. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the optical drive out. There we go, there's a toolless slider right here in the top. Oh man, this thing's heavy. Right there, tool a slider. And because the tubes come out like right here at the front, bringing them under the optical like this, you can see if I had a little bit more slack, they'd actually be sticking up and they'd be pushing up on the five and a quarter inch base. So it's quite tight, but it does actually fit even with high profile memory. So I was using Dominator Platinums in this particular build. Here, the cable management in the front's not the tidiest thing ever, but that's your mileage may vary. If you're willing to spend the time on it, you could do better than I did. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and review of the Corsair Obsidian Series 250D No Compromises Mini ITX Gaming Case. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment and let us know what you thought of the video. If you have something that is just too complicated for a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, preferably, and this is something new, let us know on the forum because we're trying to be a little bit more active there in the discussion threads that we create for the videos. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the video description where you can come and discuss it and I'll actually try to hang out there for a little while and uh, you know answer your questions and talk to you guys about this particular case. Because YouTube comments are just kind of a, a wild west these days. I have trouble sort of sorting through them and seeing what was actually recent or what wasn't and, and half the people I can't even reply to them. I love that. When people post a question and then there's no reply button because they haven't linked their Google Plus or whatever else. So yeah, post post on the forum, guys. I'll leave a link for you.